Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name's Matt Pierce. Um, uh, there we go. This afternoon, I'm going to be talking about uh, biosolar, searching the stuff of life, um, the project that we've been working on for the last year and a bit with uh, the EBI, the European Bioinformatics Institute. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce Flax, uh, the company I work for. Um, we've been building open source search applications since, since 2001. Um, we offer independent, honest advice and analysis, expert design and development. Um, we've got an Apache Solar Committer on staff, sitting in the front row here. Um, we're a UK authorised partner of LucidWorks. Um, we offer mentoring, test-driven relevancy and performance tuning using Cupid, and um, custom training programmes um, to your needs. Um, these are a few of the companies that we've worked with. Um, you can see we've worked with recruitment companies, e-commerce, news and media, bioinformatics, consulting, law. Um, we've even worked with the government. Um, so moving on. Um, <clears throat> The uh, EBI uh, is the European Bioinformatics Institute, as I mentioned earlier, um, part of the European Molecular Biology Lab Laboratory, and they're based on the Wellcome Genome Campus in Hingston, just outside Cambridge in the UK. Um, it maintains the world's most comprehensive range of freely available and up-to-date molecular databases, serving uh, millions of researchers um, with an index of over a billion items um, in various uh, areas. The BioSolar project itself has been uh, involving two teams from uh, the EBI, and the Protein Data Bank in Europe, or PDBE team, which is the European resource for the collection, organization, and dissemination of data on biological macromolecular structures. Um, they collate, maintain, and main provide access to the global repositories of macromolecular structure data. Um, and we've also been working with the Samples, Phenotypes, and Ontologies team um, also known as SPOT. Um, there are three sub-teams in the SPOT team. Um, mouse informatics, functional genomics production, and uh, the Gene Ontology Editorial Office. Uh, I've mainly been working with the FGP team, FGPT team, um, which uh, develops ontologies such as the experimental factor ontology, cell line ontology, and uh, also delivers ontology tooling um, and curation tools for things like the uh, Gene Expression Atlas and the Biosamples database. Um, so how did Biosolar come about? Um, back in about 2013, Grant Ingersoll visited the Welcome Campus um, and did a solar presentation. Um, around 90 people turned up, which I think was uh, more than they expected, and a show of hands around the room indicated that 75% of them were using uh, Lucene or solar in some capacity. Um, Samir Valenka of uh, the EBI identified grant funding, and um, between him and Flax, uh, we made a successful application to the BBSRC, uh, which is the Biotechnology and Biological Sciences Research Council in the UK. So uh, BioSolar, it's, uh, it's a one-year BBSRC-funded project. Uh, we started in September 2014. Um, we've actually um, extended the project to uh, the end of February next year. Um, and the, uh, the goal of the project was to significantly advance the state of the art with regard to indexing and querying biomedical data with freely available open source software. Um, the outputs that we're hoping to get from the uh, project and which we have got um, we've done workshops, uh, we've had papers and presentations, and um, we've also released software um, open source on our GitHub repository, and details coming up later. And um, yeah, we've done some documentation, just a little bit. Um, and we've taken inputs from the PDBE and SPOT teams um, who've uh, given us things to do and uh, made sure that uh, basically what we were doing was useful to them um, as they work. So um, this is most of the biosolar team, um, including most of the FLAX staff. Um, Tom Winch, my colleague, has been working on site with Samir and the PDBE team. He's been working on um, things like facet contains, 
um, XJoin and uh, Federated Search. And I've been working on site with uh, Tony Burdett and the SPOT team, um, largely concentrating on uh, indexing ontologies and uh, the challenges around that. And start off by talking about the uh, PDBE team. Um, Tom started off working on uh, facet contains, largely for autosuggest. Um, it's, uh, it's been hanging around on the, um, on the JIRA list for quite some time, as you can tell from the ticket number. Um, but uh, Tom finally identified a use and um, managed to come up with a patch for it. And uh, that was released in Solar 5.1. Um, it's being used um, in auto-suggest by the PDBE people. So um, they can type, uh, for example, glob, and it will return hemoglobin as well as globule. Um, whereas before, they were restricted to using facet prefix, uh, which would only return globule in that case. Um, he's also been working on XJoin, um, which is searching external sources um, linking um, external data sources with uh, solar results. And uh, there's also a JIRA ticket in for that. Um, I believe there's a patch up at the moment, um, but it's also still being worked on. Um, and in addition, he's, uh, he's working on federated search at the moment as well. So, um, the basics of XJoin um, came from a problem of Samir's. Um, he had data in an external source, um, which isn't suitable for indexing in solar for um, some reason. Uh, it might be a, a fast A um, data source, um, or it might be a, a P hammer, which is the other thing that uh, Tom's been working on linking into solar, um, which searches protein sequences against a protein sequence database. And um, the idea is that you need to match data from your search results against data from one or more of these external sources for display or analysis. Uh, it's been implemented as a solar search component. Um, you need one configured instance per external source. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, it works by um, the, uh, the developer implementing an instance of the XJoin results factory. Um, that defines the search behavior. It communicates with the external source to um, carry out the query. Um, you pass the configuration in, in your solarconfig.xml along with um, any presets that you need. And it returns the results as an XJoin results object. Um, those are keys using a string ID. Um, that's defined in the configuration and should match one of the fields in your solar schema. Um, and yes, you need one of those per external source being used. So if you're connecting to FastA and PHANA, you'll need um, an interface for both, an implementation for both, unless, of course, your API is identical for both of those things. To um, configure it, um, you add an XJoin search component in your solarconfig.xml. Um, that contains results, uh, uh, the details of your um, XJoin results factory implementations, and then you add that search component to your search request handler. Um, one caveat is that it needs to be in both first components and last component sections in your uh, request handler, um, because it's actually carrying out operations before the search is executed, as well as after when it's um, collating the, um, the results together. The results are handled using a uh, query parser based on the terms QParser plugin. Um, this allows the same methods as the uh, terms query parser um, and allows you to actually use multiple external sources. Um, we've been using filter queries to actually join the results um, to the solar results. And uh, obviously, if you're using one item per filter query, solar is going to add those together, and you may end up with fewer results than you're expecting if uh, you've got more results in, for example, your fast A. Um, source than you do in your P hammer. Um, the results, when they come back, are returned in a separate block um, in your XML or your JSON. Um, it's similar to how highlights are returned. They're kind of grouped by um, which XJoin component they belong to. 
Moving on to uh, federated search. <coughs> the, um, the problem is essentially that uh, we need to search across data sets which are split across multiple locations. And the multiple locations may be as far as different countries. Um, the EMBL has member states across Europe plus um, associate members in Australia and Argentina. So um, it's a distributed search, but it's uh, very distributed. Um, it's implemented in a similar way to the pre-Solar Cloud distributed search, um, where you specify which shards you want to connect to and uh, where your search um, results are coming from. Um, but obviously, it has to handle um, issues like uh, network redundancy, uh, network latency rather, um, where your results may take um, quite a while to come back or uh, may not come back at all because uh, one of the nodes in the cluster might be down. There's a number of challenges with federated search. Um, the primary one is result counts. Um, the same document might appear in more than one shard, um, so we need to aggregate them. Um, we need to aggregate because uh, the records might contain different data depending on where they're coming from. Um, so uh, we can't just say we want the first document and throw the, throw the rest away. Um, so this makes your, uh, your result count and your facet counts quite, uh, quite challenging. Um, a solution that we came up with is to uh, have the shards return all the document IDs um, in the result set rather than just the number found. Um, and then we use an aggregator to build a set of unique documents from those returned results. Um, this is simple for small result sets, um, but if you're returning thousands of results, it obviously gets quite inefficient and uh, uses quite a lot of bandwidth. So um, to get around this, um, we can estimate the result count using statistical methods. Um, if we find, for example, that two shards always return very similar counts, um, the overlap is likely to be high, and uh, you could probably discount one of those, uh, one of those result counts. Um, if they don't, the overlap's going to be small, um, so the data set can be treated as uh, an independent data set, and you'd add the number um, in the result count from there to uh, your, the result count from, for example, your home node. Um, another challenge is merging document sets. Um, <clears throat> documents are not unique across the data sets. Um, you may have documents um, with the same ID. Uh, the default behavior is to use the first instance of the document and to ignore the others, um, but we need to merge them together. Um, so the solution that uh, we've come up with here is to use a custom merge strategy to uh, build a list of IDs. Um, the actual easy way out of this would be to use a grouper. Um, but if you use a grouper, you can't use grouping in your query, and uh, users like to use grouping. So uh, we have to use a custom merge strategy instead. And uh, obviously, scoring is also a challenge. <coughs> Finally, we have to merge the document data together. Um, the data might not be the same across result sets. You might have fields with the same name in um, the same document coming from different result sets. And uh, so we have to merge the documents together into a single composite document. Um, we potentially use an aggregation schema um, to describe the merge process, um, indicating which fields from uh, one node should be assigned to the final field in your, um, in your final results. Um, but the merge strategy has got to be capable of merging disparate field types. Um, so if, a, if you've got a string in one schema and a float or an int in another schema, or some kind of a geospatial field, for example, um, it's got to be able to handle that without uh, blowing up. <coughs> Moving on to uh, the work with the spot team. Um, I've been working uh, on indexing ontologies. Um, ontologies are generally hierarchical um, structures. You have a root node with child nodes. Um, but just to confuse things, um, you can have additional relationships 
between nodes as well at any level uh, in the tree. Um, so it's not strictly a tree structure, it's kind of like a tree structure with um, additional branches kind of joining uh, nodes together. The problem that uh, the SPOT team have is that um, they have collections of documents um, which have been annotated with ontology references. So uh, you might have a document describing um, an experiment on the heart, for example, and that will be annotated with an ontology reference describing the heart. Um, <clears throat> when, you, when you want to search over these uh, documents, it's useful to be able to search over the associated ontology data as well. Um, the ontology data might contain uh, synonyms or uh, definitions. And um, to make your search as generic as possible, um, you want to be able to search over that. And it would be handy to be able to search over um, the associated nodes. Um, so the additional relationships that I was talking about a moment ago, um, such as has location or um, is part of. Um, and it would be good to be able to facet over the ontology references as well. Um, and again, because uh, facets, uh, because ontology references are, gen are generally tree form, um, it would be nice to actually present that in a tree form in your UI. Uh, the first approach that we took was to keep the data separate. Um, we'd start off with uh, documents, um, a set of documents. We'd run them through the indexer, and we'd add them to the, uh, a documents collection in Solar. Um, and then we'd uh, take an ontology, and we'd run that through a different indexer, and um, add that to an ontology collection, um, probably in the same Solar instance, but not necessarily. This, um, this allows us to search across the documents. Um, we find the ontology annotations, and they're generally in UR, URI form. And um, then we cross match against the ontology. Um, this requires multiple calls, so it's gonna be slower than just searching across a single call. Um, and you can't search both calls at the same time. Um, you can't use the join um, functionality that's currently in Solar um, because you can only return a single field from that and the ontology references um, <coughs> require more than just one field. So uh, the second approach that uh, we started looking at was to actually add some ontology data to the documents. Um, the documents come into the indexer and for each one, we'd go out to the ontology and um, pull back some data, um, look up the node references, we look up then labels and synonyms, and that makes it easier to include the ontology references in the search. Um, you can boost the fields as you need to, and uh, the search is generally faster. We can expand that as well. Um, once we've actually uh, started pulling the ontology data across. It's relatively simple <laughs> to, uh, it's relatively simple to uh, include uh, parent and child nodes, um, potentially up to the root level and down to the, um, the final leaf node, um, and to pull across their labels as well, because um, the labels are most likely the bit that you're gonna wanna search over. Um, the additional relationships, the um, has disease location or is part of, um, we saw in dynamic fields. Um, and that allows us to actually uh, add checkboxes, for example, in the UI, um, to search across those specific relationship types. Um, they can be dynamically generated, um, but you have to jump through a few extra solar hoops um, to do that. Um, you can't actually tell which fields are um, dynamic if you just pull back the schema from uh, Solar. So you have to actually look through the fields themselves and see which ones are dynamic. And you can see here, um, this is a proof of concept web application that we put together. Um, we've got a general search box up there. Um, options to include the child and parent labels. Um, they search just one step removed in this case. And some dynamically generated additional relationship search options. Um, you can see here we've got a search for heart, um, and the user's selected has disease location, 
Um, so they want to find nodes. They want to find documents where um, the record's been annotated with um, an ontology entry that uh, is either related to the heart or has, uh, has the heart as a disease location. And you can see here from uh, my lovely results page, beautifully formatted, um, that uh, we've got related labels there with um, has disease location and uh, it's showing heart, so the search has worked. So everything's good. The final result from, up, from uh, this approach um, was to develop an update processor um, to do this as part of the actual uh, the indexing process um, during the update chain. Um, the user adds this to their solar config, um, identifies the uh, ontology file, um, uh, the ontology location rather, which could be a file, it could be a URL, um, and the field containing the annotation data. Um, we've tried to aim for convention over configuration um, for most of the properties. So the uh, field names are all actually prefixed with uh, the ontology um, annotation field name and then uh, a various string of underscores and so on. And we're using um, underscore S for uh, URIs and underscore T for text fields, um, sticking with the general, conf um, general convention for solar dynamic field naming um, to keep things simple. Um, everything is customizable. Um, if you look at the GitHub page for this particular extension, um, there are a lot of options for um, basically tweaking things field names particularly, um, and uh, which uh, annotations you're actually using from your ontology for um, definitions and synonyms, um, because these can vary between ontologies. Um, there's nothing terrifically standardized about ontologies apart from the, the uh, label field. Um, we've also developed a similar but not identical plugin for Elasticsearch, because Elasticsearch does these things differently. Um, and that's also available um, from the GitHub repository. <clears throat> As mentioning earlier, um, displaying your, um, your ontology facets in a tree. Um, we put together an additional search component um, that returns the facets from ontology references in tree form. Uh, it extends the facet component and uh, actually replaces it in your solar config. And uh, it works by taking the initial facets from the results and searches across the hierarchical references to build the tree during the facet generation stage in solar. Um, you can, of course, do this client-side if you want to, um, but we found that if you do it client-side, you can end up doing five, six, maybe a dozen calls back to solar to actually look up your various levels in the tree. Um, and obviously, that's not very efficient. Um, so if you can do it during facet generation, it makes things, uh, it makes things a fair bit quicker. Um, you can also use a se separate collection um, to build up the tree so you can have your ontology entries in one collection in solar and your documents in another. But obviously it must be part of the same solar instance, um, otherwise you're losing all your advantages of actually doing it inside solar. Um, the challenges that uh, come with facet trees are that uh, nodes may have multiple parents. Um, because of the way that ontology is structured, um, a node might have parents um, from more than one area of the tree. Um, and unfortunately, there's not really a solution to that. Um, it's something that you just have to put up with in your display. Um, the other um, challenge that we came across was um, how to actually display them efficiently. Uh, you can see from the um, example here uh, the default behavior is to return the entire tree, um, but that's not always useful. Um, you can see here we've had to click through uh, three or four levels to actually get to um, some facets that you can actually use to filter on. Um, obviously, people are going to get frustrated if they have to click through three or four levels all the time. Um, so the solution that we came up with for that was to actually prune the tree. Um, sounds quite obvious. Um, we came up with a couple of pruning options. Um, a simple pruning, which is uh, illustrated here on the left, um, is basically to go through and remove all the layers which don't have any useful information. 
Um, you define useful information as um, facets that you can click on or um, entries with three or more children that you can actually click on. Um, so you'll see here we've got heart disease, which you can't actually use to filter, but it's got three, four, five, five children, which you can actually um, use to filter directly. The other option um, is to actually just return the most significant facets at a top level and um, to keep the remainder in a separate section at the bottom. Um, and uh, we run the simple pruning across, um, across the other section as well. And so again, you don't have to go digging through um, three or four levels of uh, useless information to get to, uh, get to that facet that you want to, uh, want to apply. Returning to ontology indexing um, and searching, the third approach that uh, we wanted to look at was to actually um, search the ontology itself and uh, cross-match the results uh, with uh, your document store. Basically, um, some advanced users would like to be able to execute Sparkle queries. Um, Sparkle's uh, an RDF query language for searching across triple stores, um, where triple stores are basically databases um, where each item uh, represents a relationship between a subject and an object um, with a predicate. So, for example, the heart is part of the human body, um, the heart being the, um, the subject and the human body. No, the heart being the object and the human body being the subject. So, um, we wanted to implement Sparkle queries to um, allow people to do complicated searches over the ontology relationships and then actually cross match those against the documents and return uh, documents which have those ontology relationships. Uh, those ontology annotations applied. Um, back to our proof of concept web application. Um, this is the Sparkle search page. We've got a prefix block at the top there, um, which is just defining a few, um, a few prefixes that you might want to apply um, if you want to search over synonyms or annotations and use some shorthand for that. And uh, there's a query there for um, searching entries with uh, the label lung. Um, we're using Apache Jenna um, to do this. Um, you can hook Jenna together with um, Solar to, um, by telling it which uh, text fields it should search over from Solar. And um, then it uses its own triple store um, to do the additional searching um, and the cross matching in relationships. Um, you need to return the reference URI in the return fields. Um, so that you can use that to cross-match with the documents and then you use a filter query to um, choose the documents that you want to uh, return in your, in your result set. Um, it's not terrifically different from uh, the XJoin work uh, that Tom's been doing, but um, it's, uh, it's different enough, I think. <laughs> um, we also put together a, a generic ontology indexer. Um, it's a standalone application to index different ontologies. Um, you can set up uh, separate configurations for each ontology. Um, so you can set your annotations for synonyms and definitions um, for um, each ontology. We've tried to use some sensible defaults for those. Um, and there's a plugin layer for it as well. So um, when you're indexing your ontology, if you want to um, do some lookup, at item level, um, maybe uh, check a database or an external data source, and um, you can add that data to your ontology entry. Um, and you can also um, put together a plugin for um, ontology level, um, ontology level um, lookup. So if you wanted to, for example, push an ontology into MongoDB or Neo4j, um, you could write a plugin to do that. Um, there was some cross-pollination with the EBI's ontology lookup service. Um, there's a new version of this. It's uh, currently in beta, I believe. I don't think it's gone live yet. And uh, that's, uh, they've been putting together a nice RESTful API to uh, make that much more searchable and user-friendly for people who don't want to go to the website and do it. So, in conclusion, what have we achieved? 
Um, you can search across multiple external data sets, um, which is the XJoin function. Um, the solo ticket for that is, uh, the JIRA ticket rather, is um, 7341. Um, if you're interested in that, please uh, do upvote it um, if you'd like to see it in a, in a future solar release. Um, we can search across multiple solar nodes across different campuses. Um, we can index ontologies and we can enrich documents with um, ontology data and we can make the facets look nice. Uh, if you'd like to get involved, um, please, uh, please go ahead and check out the GitHub page, um, flax search slash biosolar. Um, and as I mentioned before, please uh, do vote for XJoin if you'd like to see it in a solar release. We've got a couple of events coming up. Um, on the 7th of December in Cambridge, um, we've got uh, a tutorial in the uh, semantic web applications and tools for life sciences. Um, conference. Um, we're going to be covering ontology indexing and search and probably uh, setting up the um, solar or elastic search um, ontology indexing plugin, showing people how to use that. And um, then in February next year, um, there's a workshop at the EBI campus in Hingston in the UK. Um, you can sign up for that at the web address there. So. Um, yeah, if, uh, if you download the presentation afterwards, obviously you can, uh, you can take a look at that. And the EBI workshop's gonna be um, hands-on, interactive, um, and we're gonna be looking at uh, spreading understanding of different search technologies for biomedical data. Um, so, thank you for listening. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Matt Pierce. Um, my email address there, uh, matt at flax.co.uk. Uh, if you'd like to check out the uh, Flax blog or get in contact, those are our contact details. And uh, our Twitter handle is Flax Search, which uh, Charlie, uh, who runs the company, is uh, using. Um, so, thank you very much. Um, has anybody got any questions? Yeah? Um, I believe it's done in the same way as uh, grouping, um, but I couldn't say for sure, to be honest. Um, it's not a bit of code that I uh, actually worked on, so it's, uh, it's basically, um, I believe you, uh, you take the score from uh, your base node and uh, use that. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? No? I'm really looking forward to XJoin because that's what this does. We always run into the problem where people like to join and then they don't like to use the recommender for products or chemical structures or whatever. And we see it isn't always the best choice for everything. So it's much sure. less of a solar mixing complex than it was before. <laughs> Um. <laughs> um, it wasn't too bad, actually. Um, I mean, there was a lot of documentation to dig through. It's not, um, it's not something where you can just sort of jump in. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was relatively straightforward. It's, um, you know, you, you just basically build a class to uh, do your querying and uh, use that. Okay, um, I think we're out of time. So uh, thank, thanks again for listening. And uh, come, come talk to me and Alan afterwards uh, if, you'd, uh, if you'd like more information.